So just as I was parking the van up there, um, I passed a bloke who said to me, he'd just finished his hike, and he said, I'll tell you what, lad, the conditions are going to be good up there for photography today. And that is what you want to hear. What a start. And he kept walking on down the road. And I watched him this. Oh, I will tell you what. Never mind the views and the location, but look at the conditions. It is not half looking promising today, guys. Um, proper excited for today's adventure, if you cannot tell. And I've got a couple of little bits that I want to chat about as well. But before we get into it, a massive thanks to Valerie for kindly sponsoring today's video. It's a company that I'm very, very proud to be associated with. Um, we all know the annoyance in our little niche of landscape photography of a normal pair of gloves where you've got to take them off to use your camera, even your phone. For me, when I'm making these videos, my video camera, nightmare. Valerie, they've got these nice little finger caps and on these particular gloves, which are called the Milfords, they fit into these little elastic section, sections here. So you've got full dexterity, full use of all your gear. Um, I've decided to wear these today. It's sitting about seven or eight degrees and I suppose we're slowly coming into spring now. On Valerie's website, these Milfords are classed as um, like a mild winter glove, but they've got all different ones, you know, right down to deep winter. Um, but I will probably be wearing these beasts for the next couple of months, let's say. And let me show you this. These little pockets hold a little glove shell. Let me pop this beast on and show you. Oh, so look at that, what a treat. A nice little shell for when you get, you know, showers. For someone like me, who photographs in the Lake District in Scotland, wonderful. And that, like I said, just fits in the back of the pocket. If you'd like to go and get your own pair of photography gloves, please use the code HENRY at checkout to get yourself free shipping. Absolutely wonderful. And they've extended that code for me right up until the end of March, the 31st of March. So make sure that you make the most of that. Right, let's crack on. That is right guys, that is a, a hat, a bobble hat with sheep on it, and not just any sheep, the Lake District Herdrick sheep. What a find, what a find indeed. So today's adventure, I'm heading up a fell called Weatherlam. The reason is, is because I actually know this area really well around Conison, and I conduct a lot of my one-to-one -one workshops around here. A, because like I said, I know it so well, and B, because it offers a lot of variety. And I got this shot, shot. I'll pop it up on the screen here. Uh, I actually just took this on my phone during a workshop, but I quite liked it with the rainbow. And Weatherlam is off in the background, as Wainwright describes it. Uh, he says something like it, it's a whale um, coming out of the ocean. He definitely says it more gracefully than that. Apologies, Mr. Wainwright, but you can really see it. And I just thought, as much as I know this area, Weatherlam looms over it, and I've never been up it, so it's about time. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Now I wanted to talk about my gear in a way, actually, my Nikon Z7, you know, my stills gear. Uh, my Nikon Z7 Mark I and my lenses, which is my 24 to 200 millimeter, 14 to 30 millimeter. And just how content I am with this setup, you know, and how comfortable I am with it. Everything just feels right. You know, you've probably been there yourself as a landscape photographer, if you're into it, you know, you just feel so comfy with your gear. And dare I say it, I'm actually loving everything a lot more than my Nikon D7200, which I loved. But what I've started to realize is it's actually the lenses that I love, rather than the, the Nikon Z, that's not the Nikon Z7, the Nikon Z7, which is in my bag. Um, oh, excuse me. And the versatility of the lenses, you know, not even the sharpness or anything, all of that's fine. But yeah, um, the 24 to 200 especially, it's just unreal. It never comes off my Nikon Z7. Um, and I absolutely love it. And I'd say probably the word that I'm, you know, looking for here is like convenience. It just never comes off the camera, unless I'm doing wide angles uh, shots like you just seen in Scotland recently where I'm on the coast and I want to get right in close to the foreground. That 24 to 200 never comes off my Nikon Z7. And it just makes everything so easy. You know, 24 mil 
on a full frame camera especially it's proper wide like um, and then 200 mil I can get in close enough to everything that I want when I'm in locations like this you know um, if I'm looking to pick out details or shapes off in the distance and I've done it a few times as well where I can switch the Nikon Z7 to DX mode um, which is crop sensor mode and get in a little bit further as well and yeah I'm just absolutely loving it so of course I will be using said gear today and this is looking absolutely wonderful already so hopefully next time I chat to you I'll be finding something to take a picture of Ah, uh, so you know what? I knew this was gonna happen. I have barely come a minute and we have already got the Nikon Z7 out with, thankfully, the 24 to 200 lens. I say thankfully because I just said to you that it never comes off the camera. So if I'd have been shooting this with my 14 to 30 lens, I'd have probably looked a bit of a wally. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. We're looking back up to Brimfell. We've got a nice little dusting of snow up there just to you know give this photograph a little bit of something but we've also got a really small old um ruined building here which i believe is from perhaps the copper mines or maybe the slate mines if anybody knows please correct me if i'm wrong so i've stuck that building down in the bottom right hand third of this photograph and then of course the background just speaks for itself there's a little bit of detail in the sky in the clouds so as long as i don't overexpose that we're good to go so I'm in at 100 mil, and yeah, I've just zoomed in, so I'm honed in on that building down there. Pretty happy with this one. ISO 64, F11, and 1 40th of a second. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Oh, so how friggin' awesome does that look? I love it in the Lake District when you get a tarn just like this and then a sort of bowl of mountains or just a semicircle of mountains surrounding it. Absolutely wonderful. And once again, the snow is just giving this a little bit of something, you know. It's, it's, it's winter photography. It's fantastic. So I think what I'm going to do here now is get the Z7 out and actually put the 14 to 30 millimeter lens on and just shoot this as is. If I move my head out of the way, <laughs> just as you've seen it there like that i think it's one of them instances where i've worked hard to get up to this location and it you know it'd just be a shame not to shoot the wide shot here oh, wonderful stuff oh so it's just quality let me tell you that I mean, it's simple stuff. You know, it's almost, it's almost one of them photographs where it's pointless me even talking to you about it because it's so obvious what I'm doing. But as always, I like to have a little bit of a chit chat. So 14 to 30 millimeter lens on at 14 mil. And all I'm doing is just capturing this that you can see behind me in its entirety. Absolutely wonderful. Fortunately, the 14 millimeter is capturing levers water here all the way from left to right. And I've just made sure I've got a nice little gap on each side as well, just to give the subject a little bit of breathing room as well. It feels nicer in the photograph. Everything else just speaks for itself. We've got a little dusting of snow again, and then we've struck gold with the sky, or should I say we've struck copper because we were down in the copper mine valley. 
hasn't really got the same ring to it, has it? We've struck copper <laughs> with the clouds because a few moody clouds have come in, like I think I said a second ago, and it's just, again, like the snow, giving the image a little bit of something. You know what else as well? Over my right shoulder there, um, we've got a little break in the clouds, and although we're not getting any direct light, it's just giving us this, like, second-hand glow of light down in this bowl here as the mountains arch round Leaver's Water absolutely wonderful in fact it's the same as like when i was in scotland my last few videos you know and i said it doesn't really bother me if i don't get direct sunlight yes i prefer it if i could choose but for me it is just a bonus i cannot have any complaints with this this is wonderful so 14 millimeters like i said iso 64 f11 and this is at 1 15th of a second because the moody clouds have made it just a little bit darker So, sorry guys, I'm a bit rude, I'm just chilling on my phone. Um, I posted on my Instagram um, last week sometime asking you guys what your favourite hiking apps are, you know, for, for, for like navigation and stuff like that. Because for ages I've been using Outdoor Active. I used to use View Ranger and I loved it. And then I think Outdoor Active bought View Ranger and it's, you know, the sort of thing where your subscription moves over. Um, to Outdoor Active, to the, to the different company. And I just never got on with it. I didn't like it. Maybe it was my phone, but I just found it really slow. Didn't really like the interface in comparison to ViewRanger. So I asked on Instagram, I got some wonderful answers. And today I've been using the OS Maps app, which I'm absolutely loving um, so far. I think the only reluctance I ever had with using the normal OS Maps was that sometimes I don't use Ordnance Survey Maps. However, vast majority of the time I'm using them. Absolutely loving this. So I just wanted to say thanks to everyone's suggestions. There was a lot of um, apps that I'd not even heard of, you know. Um, but yeah, and I also wanted to say as well, I have started using Instagram again. So go and give me a follow. Um, I just think it's a really nice way to stay in touch with you guys, bit of chit chat, and just to keep you updated. You know, especially now I'm doing up the Blue Jay, my camper van and stuff. It's pretty cool. And I've started a Facebook page madness i've never I had a personal facebook for years and years but again i know a lot of you don't use instagram so i just thought i'll start a facebook page let's keep in touch it's good for a few updates and that isn't it so i'll leave the links in the description below give us a follow on facebook i think i've only got like 200 and summit followers it's not going well <laughs> i'm only joking uh, but yeah give us a follow and instagram as well and i'll put the links below the video right i'm going to make a good little bit of headway now up towards weatherland because we're about an hour and a half till the sunset Oh my goodness me, we are certainly up in the fells now. <laughs> Kicking off, absolutely. Oh, wonderful. So, not much light. We've still got about 40 minutes until the sunset and that's probably not, not looking promising, but I mean, once again, what could possibly be complained about here? Oh, I love the Lake District so much. I love this planet. I love the Earth. What a treat. <laughs> right. A little bit of a wobble on, I'll meet us at the top. Oh, oh we've made it, I'm pretty shattered actually. <laughs> there is the top. Oh, get a look at some of these views behind me, but let me just peg it up here a bit because Ah, this is looking like, oh, where the action is. Get a look at that. 
absolutely beautiful. So that's out um, to the west, if that's not obvious, sort of where the sun is setting. Back to Connis and Old Man. And that is, I think, where I'm going to focus my attention. It's beautiful that way. A little bit more sort of charming and quaint, but this. You know what it feels like? It feels epic, but quite intimate all at the same time. Something's got to be made of that. So I'm going to do two things now. Firstly, get the jet boil out. Have a bit of din-dins up here on Weatherlam. And, and secondly, obviously get the camera set up as well and try and figure something out. Oh, so I had to act proper quickly then just to get the photograph. Fortunately, I did. Now you can probably see in the background there, there's a nice little strip of orange and that's what made me want to focus in that direction, like I said. But loads of cloud has come in. Oh, you can feel the wind now. You can feel it, you can hear it. I can certainly feel it, let me tell you. But loads of cloud came in over the Connison Fells and in particular over Connison Old Man, which was my background subject. So we had to just like scramble the camera out the bag, get the tripod set up, <laughs> figure out a composition and grab it, but I managed to do it. Fortunately, we had a really nice little bit of uh, foreground interest here in this sort of ice down here is undisturbed by some of the footprints. And it worked really, really well. I put my 14 to 30 millimeter lens on, on the Nikon Z7 because I wanted to be at around about 19 or 20 mil, which was enough to capture all of this foreground here, which was wonderful. This rock was over on the left-hand side of the frame as well, which was nice. He sort of mimicked Connison Old Man in his shape, but it was all about the drama in the background. Absolutely wonderful. And then clouds. I mean, they're nice now, but before it was just a little bit better because we could see a few of the shapes of the Coniston Fells. <sighs> what a treat. So I'm going to make that the last image of the day. I am going to have my jet boil meal, but I'm going to find a bit of shelter and get out of this wind. But I thank you so much for, for tuning in and for joining me on this adventure. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new. And I hope you like this last photograph. Once again, remember to go and check out Valerie's Photography Gloves and use the offer code Henry at checkout for your free shipping. I'll leave it in the description below. And go and give me a follow on Facebook as well. <laughs> How much can I get in at the end? Thank you and I shall see you on the next adventure. Out.